Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. I am standing right in front of the all new 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander, which is one of the most exciting news coming from Toyota this year. And what I'm going to do is my usual engineer's audit to check for uh, quality of the manufacturing, even though this is a prototype, look for the paint defects, as well as the fit and finish of the parts outside and inside and let you know whether or not this meets my expectation as an automotive engineer. So let me go around the outside and check for how they engineered this vehicle and also how the panels and the body parts were made and designed. And then I'll take you inside and do the exact same thing and check for quality control and fit and finish. And uh, let's see how this thing actually stand up to my expectation. So let's go and take a look. So let me do my usual engineer's check to see if the panels are well put together and whether or not they were engineered correctly. You can always tell how good the engineer work is by looking at this curvature, which is always very difficult. This one is have a multiple curvature, curvature here, then curvature here. So it's actually very difficult to engineer this correctly, uh, but the panel fit is shockingly good for supposedly a pre-production or a prototyping level of car. This one is a little bit higher than this one by about half a millimeter, but the actual gap stays really consistent from front to back. It widens a little bit here, but not by much. And uh, so this kind of meets my expectation because it's about three millimeter here and about 3.5 millimeter here. And it's actually better than the current Highlander, which we actually happen to own. Let's take a look at the rest of the panel. So this is the front fender, also good fit with a plastic bumper here. Uh, there's no issue with the matching of the paint and all of the curvature uh, line up perfectly, which is really difficult to do. In fact, I suspect that this particular model might even have a better quality than the final production because it's likely hand built. Now let's take a look at front fender and the front door. And this is when you can uh, begin to see a little bit of an issue. This one is quite a bit higher than this side and uh, it's not quite lined up yet. But once again, for um, pre-production model is shockingly well done. The gaps are very consistent, about 3.5 millimeter all the way from top to bottom. And that's unheard of in the pre-production models. Uh, also front door to rear door, almost perfect fit. And then the rear door to rear fender, also really well done with a very small gap. This is less than four millimeters which is really difficult to do in uh, this type of car because it's a large car with large panels. And if you look at the back also, uh, really good lineup here. And same thing on the other side. What about, um, what about the paint job? Well, typically speaking, Toyota does a pretty good job with the paint job. You can see the gloss and the clear coat, really well done. There's a bit of an orange peel around here compared to the lower panels, which is often the case. And Toyota tend to have a little bit more orange peel than, than other brands. So you can see the little bit of orange peel here. That should improve as the paint process also improves during the production stage. But the gloss and the fit and the finish of the paint looks all very consistent and uh, actually quite well done. It's a little bit of a gap issue here. But again, for a pre-production, it's excellent. And you can tell the gloss and the clear coat of the paint job is really well done. So overall, the exterior panels are actually really good. Look at the plastic components here. These are all done by suppliers, not by Toyota, but um, the actual design and engineering of the plastic components and their fit. If you look at these edges, absolutely excellent. And even this plastic part also well made with no issue in terms of the components. These grills also have a really good paint job. So you know what, once again, for pre-production or prototype stage, this prototype or pre-production model, I call it, is first class. It's actually better made than most production cars out there. Now let's take a look inside to see if the same can be said of the interior quality. So now I'm inside the Grand Highlander and I'm going to look for fit and finish issues and also how good the materials are uh, being produced by suppliers. And uh, you can tell that by looking at the composition of the, of the plastic and then how they reflect the light. So you can tell, for example, this particular um, plastic part here, which is a soft plastic, uh, really, really well done because it's a matte finish as opposed to a shiny finish. 
and that's often very difficult to do at um, prototype stage but this one looks almost production ready and you can see the speaker grill which is also often a difficult one is a perfect fit um, even some of the components here no issue with uh, alignment and all of the parts seems to be really well made so my estimate is that this is not a prototype it's what we call pilot production model it's only about two steps away from final production based on my examination because all the parts look production ready uh, really loving this uh, colored trim here and another different texture over here a mixture of uh, textures colors um, so forth makes it much more enriching than I expected from uh, b-roll and from the photos uh, also bronze color over here as well you can tell all the parts fit well I don't see here any rattles or squeaks uh, even this p-pillar is solid usually this thing moves a bit when I do the punch test but this one is completely solid the headliner also really well made and all of the plastic looks again production level of quality no surprise from Toyota but this is definitely better fit and finish than many of other Toyota production models I saw like for example like Tundra when we saw the pre-production model of that it was not very well built but this one wow really really well built the seats the stitching over here the material reflection over here the texture are all excellent and I think most people know that uh, this one has a huge huge center console enough to put a tablet in fact you can probably put a computer in here uh, so that's a really really uh, nice touch and feature and the rest of the plastic components the shiny ones are all good I just really wish they stopped using this shiny plastic because you can already tell there's a bunch of scratches in here and this one is going to be uh, really scratched up after you use it because your hand is always going to be here resting and therefore scratching uh, but design is excellent it feels pretty airy we do own uh, 2020 Highlander so we're quite familiar with this vehicle we're going to the back seat shortly to take a look at uh, the roominess uh, but uh, the overall quality and fit and finish oh wow it's way better than I expected for uh, prototype or pre-production model uh, now let's take a look at the back and see how roomy it is actually let's take a look at the cargo space first before I hop into the second and the third seat uh, but you can tell it's got a huge huge rear cargo now this is a big difference from the Highlander that we own right now which is actually quite roomy already but this one oh my goodness wow this length over here and the width is quite surprising I don't have a measuring tape right now I wish I did so I can actually measure the dimension here but it's very usable space almost completely flat there's a slight angle to this but not by much pretty well flat from here all the way to the uh, back of the second row of seat and the sail is not too high either off the ground uh, and I like the fact that this is a kind of very solid plastic not a flimsy plastic and then there's a little bit of space here for tools not much space right now now let's fold these seats properly and then take a look at the second and the third seat to see how roomy and comfortable they are by the way even with the third seat up there's actually pretty good space usually in a three row SUV when you put the third seat up there's almost no space in the back and that's true even for very large SUVs but this one has plenty of space it looks like about three feet across here and pretty wide so this is a very usable space despite the fact that the third seat is up so I'm actually quite pleased with that so let's try the third row of seat first and it, this is quite vertical right now but you can adjust this quite a bit all the way almost uh, like 40 degrees 35 degrees angle but let's leave it right here and see how comfortable it is so I'm gonna sit down here and flip the camera and you can tell it's pretty roomy I'm going to move over here to left and right side and see how my leg room is and even though I'm not a very tall person I'm 5'8 it's pretty comfortable in fact there's still a couple of inches of uh, leg room space between the second row and my third seat and it's a uh, good headroom space as well over to the ceiling I'm not touching the ceiling and the comfort level is pretty good I think the seats are a little bit firm which is expected because they're trying to probably make the seats a little bit thinner to uh, free up more space but it's quite comfortable and I can sit here for you know maybe a couple of hours not sure about long long trips 
and uh, also the floor is almost flat except for these seat uh, plastic parts over here and the rail otherwise it's pretty well flat and surprisingly comfortable uh, even three cup holders here and some usb charging for the back seat as well now let's take a look at the second row of seat and see if that's any good now let's get into the second row of seat here which is uh, like a captain chair for this particular model in terms of the front seat i gotta adjust it more or less to my height and i've got um, pretty good like four or five inches over here and most important of all it's very comfortable the seat cushions and the comfort level is excellent maybe just as comfortable as the front seat which isn't always uh, the case way more comfortable than the third seat for sure those cushions are a bit thin so they're roomy and much more practical than in the normal highlander but not as comfortable as the second row of seats which is a full cushion and it's got the full thickness here to give you maximum comfort so these are very very comfortable also love the big panorama design for the moonroof it feels like Toda keeps making these things bigger and bigger each year it feels very very airy and open just the bar coming across here but otherwise it's pretty wide open giving you a really good uh, overall feel for the interior so i can tell that they're really trying to maximize the comfort for grand highlander in terms of the interior now because the uh, design of the dash is different from the highlander and also the seats and also the exterior this car is more or less a brand new vehicle even though they're calling it grand highlander and it is based on the same platform i think more or less it's a new vehicle when compared to the normal highlander uh, so once again lots of uh, storage space here in the second row as well and some temperature control and lots of usb charging uh, so there's no shortage of cup holders storage usb charging ports and then also different types of control in terms of temperature very comfortable inside and even the actual design and the quality of the seats in the back here is also excellent these looks pretty well close to the production model in terms of the stitching and the type of materials they're using it looks excellent you know, i mean this thing looks ready to go in production so once again this is pretty close to a production model probably only one or two stages before that uh, and it's really really well built it is built in the princeton indiana factory where the other highlanders are produced now let's open the hood and take a look inside to see what we can discover in terms of quality so this is the 2.4 liter hybrid max by toyota so the v6 is dropped and instead we have a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine with hybrid mechanism and it does produce phenomenal amount of power and torque but would it feel the same as a v6 engine no that wouldn't be the case so for those of you who love the feel of a v6 engine you might be a little bit disappointed but uh, there's absolutely sufficient power and torque in terms of performance and acceleration so uh, you're not going to miss the power and torque from the old v6 engine you, but you might miss the feel of it now let's take a look in terms of what the engineers have done inside to make sure that uh, it's serviceable and also to make sure that it was correctly installed and manufactured and one of the things that Toyota does really well is to mark off all these parts that's critical with a little ink you can see them in throughout the different places there will be more of this in the production model um, but what they do is as they finish outfitting these pipes the operator marks it to say that they, it was done correctly and they've checked for quality and you'll see it throughout it's a little hard to see because it's underneath but all these critical pipes and uh, components would have a little bit of ink so you see a blue ink here blue ink over here more blue ink over here you see some yellow ink over there different color means different things uh, so the metal pipes aluminum pipes are blue and then the rubber holes are usually yellow in color uh, and you can even see some mark over here now these marking will change for production model a little bit most likely you'll see a lot more of it as they progress through the production system but once again it looks production ready for me in terms of the quality of the fit and finish even these um, inner parts are painted well there's no clear coat on these but uh, actual painting is really well done these are actually adhesive and these are usually just applied by uh, by hand so don't worry about uh, the way it looks this is how it looks even in the production model so this is nothing to do with the quality of the manufacturing 
um, and but otherwise all of the components seem to fit really well I don't see anything uh, out of place and even the labels are fit well you can tell the labels are not crooked like it is in many other brands uh, and the entire uh, fit and finish of the engine compartment looks fantastic uh, and uh, you know what it is pretty packed in here not easy to service perhaps but there is enough space to put your hands in there for servicing different components and be able to reach some parts so they have definitely thought about that and you can tell this plastic is not production ready you can tell that uh, the color and the finish is not the same as a production model so this, this is definitely going to improve but the rest of the components looks pretty good we're not able to drive this one obviously this is a showroom product but we should have an opportunity to drive pretty soon i'm looking forward to how the 2.4 turbo with a hybrid well function for this Grand Highlander. I suspect no issue at all in terms of performance, but whether you will like the feel of the turbocharged four cylinder or not will be something that's subject to your own interpretation. So that's the uh, engine compartment. It looks really, really well finished for a prototype. And um, overall, I will give it solid A minus in terms of the quality for the exterior, the interior, the actual parts and the quality as well and even engine compartment looks really well put together and ready for production. So if you're concerned about the fact that this is an all new model built in the US in Indiana plant, I don't think you need to worry. I feel much better after looking at this carefully inside and out that it looks like it's going to be a well built vehicle with minimal issues in terms of body work and fit and finish. Uh, I'm really looking forward to driving this and evaluating it properly. I hope you like my engineer's audit for now. Uh, there's a lot more that I can talk about this in the future, but for now I'm going to sign off. But let me know in the comments below what else you want to know about the Grand Highlander and what you think of some of the findings I've presented with this model. I look forward to hearing from you, but I'm signing off for now.